Good evening. And welcome to all of you from the Art Platform India. I'm Anupa Mehta and I'm a partner gallery with the Art Platform, which was set up by Sharon Appa Rao in 2020 as a response to the pandemic. It's wonderful for us to be able to see uh, the Art Platform growing and so many people joining our TAP talks. So thank you for being with us today for what promises to be a very special event. We have with us Krupa Amin and Puneet Shah. And while many of you already know them, um, I would just like to give you a brief introduction before we start our discussion. Krupa Amin is the founder and director of Space Studios, Baroda. She graduated from Nottingham University, UK, and thereafter studied at the Sotheby's Institute of Art. She's worked at Ocean's Auction House in both the Art Gallery in Mumbai before founding Space Studio in 2008. Space Studio in Alembic City, Baroda is a nonprofit organization supporting emerging artists through various residencies, exhibitions, workshops, music concerts, and festivals. Welcome Krupa and thank you for being with us today. And joining her in conversation is Puneet Shah, director and founder of Akara Art, which he established in 2009 and subsequently opened the gallery space in 2016. Puneet, as many of us know, is noted for his accurate eye for aesthetic and artistic skill. He wanted to start a gallery program that proposed to expand and express myriad viewpoints of a large spectrum of artists, both modern and contemporary. Uh, today's discussion um, should be extra interesting for us because both Puneet and Kurpa know each other for a while. And I'm sure that we're going to have conversations which are going to be freewheeling and um, touching upon both patronage and the market. So thank you both for being with us today. Uh, thanks, Anupa. Thanks for the introduction. Like you said, Krupa and I have uh, uh, known each other for a while, and uh, we just want to make sure that, you know, this conversation is going to be fairly informal and just yeah. like uh, more a chat between two friends rather than a very, very serious dialogue. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Tap, for organizing this and, uh, you know, uh, organizing this talk. And uh, I mean, we can start if we are ready. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, the idea is to, for me to ask Rupa questions on patronage, like you said, and uh, how, how that has kind of impacted us. And uh, conversely, Rupa can follow up with questions on the market and its dynamics once we are kind of done asking her, her questions. Uh, so without wasting time, Krupa, I'd like to ask you, like, you know, like uh, Anupa already mentioned that you have a long association with the arts, your family has had a close association with Baroda and the uh, artists there. Uh, you work with both the Oceans, both in their prime, and also like, you know, studied at Sadhvi. So like, what, what has influenced you most in your journey and what is your position in the art world today? Uh, thanks, Puneet, for that. Uh, thank you, Anupa and uh, Sharon, for inviting us on the TAP platform. I hope I can do justice uh, to it. Um, so I'll take the first question, like you're saying. Um, I think growing up in Baroda uh, was clearly an advantage. Um, you know, there were friends uh, who were artists, um, and art was always sort of part of my everyday life. Um, you know, growing up, um, this was more like an informal um, setting. And I think as I worked in, um, I was curious, and hence I studied art in um, Sadhubis, worked in uh, Oceans and uh, Bodhi. Right. And I think learned all the sort of different aspects of the art ecosystem, whether it was, I was part of selling art, curating, uh, researching, uh, Oceans had a beautiful archive. Um, so I got to know a lot about uh, the modern masters. Um, so all in all, it was it was great, but I think going back to um, Baroda and uh, interacting with the younger artists was what uh, was really, you know, it was something I really wanted to do. And I had the infrastructure and support uh, in Baroda. So okay. I think Space uh, Studio was started, um, you know, after that, um, um, I wanted to sort of, uh, work, you know, let artists work together, uh, you know, create in a space and sort of interact with each other. So that's how space started. And and you started space like what, 15 years ago, right? 
Yeah, it was about 15 years ago. Um, I remember visiting uh, Nirmala, who was an artist uh, from Baroda. Uh, she was doing large scale works and I went to her studio when I was 21. And I think um, she was struggling to show me her large you know, works in a small studio. And it used to happen to you know, quite a few artists that I went to visit. Yeah. Um, and I thought that, you know, I'd seen residencies, I'd seen Kanoria and um, I'd heard about the other residencies around the world. And I thought that, um, you know, it wasn't sort of reinventing the wheel, but I just wanted to do something uh, since there were so many artists who, um, you know, Baroda would be a great place to sort of uh, do this. And um, and now we're actually in the middle of uh, Baroda city. This, what I started earlier was in a uh, disused warehouse, uh, but now we've got a beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, there's about um, seven to eight um, artist studios. There's a printmaking uh, facility, a gallery, and uh, many other things. So um, maybe we can go through the slides uh, yeah, that sure. I have for the studio um, and see more of it. And and obviously you can talk us through the slides, right? As to yeah, so we can maybe yeah, that'll be great. Okay, so I, I maybe I'll just go through each slide so I can just tell a bit about uh, what the studio is like. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, the space is, I mean, I, I think it's beautiful. Um, it's, again, uh, old factory buildings. Uh, we've got seven to seven, eight of them. Uh, this is, again, I think um, the main thing that I wanted artists to come and do is get exposed to um, all the elements of the art market. And, uh, you know, interact with the, with the other artists in Baroda as well as uh, with their fellow friends. It was, it, you know, it's a great space. So, um, so if we can go to the next slide. So I also encourage a lot of artist interactions. So there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, the artists come and sort of uh, uh, present on their work. The other artists come and, you know, can obviously comment on it, critique it. Uh, the great thing about Baroda is that there's a, amazing fine arts faculty, um, a lot of, um, I encourage all the sort of, um, you know, faculty to come and sort of meet the artists, uh, whether they're from Baroda or from out of uh, Baroda and it, and it works quite beautifully. Um, can we go to the next slide? And the coordination from Bombay and Baroda you think is not that bad, like, I'm sure you've got to yeah, spend it's... a lot of time there. Absolutely. My home is there. My family is there. So I end up going quite often and it's always nice to go back to the studio and meet the artists and, you know, interact with them. Um, this is uh, something also I do quite often, which is with each residency we have. Um, so the residency period is about four to five months uh, and I try and organize a program for it. Uh, this is in Chapaner, which is like a UNESCO heritage site. Um, near Baroda and this is the artist, uh, it, it's an offsite. I mean, I do this, we've gone to uh, Bombay um, for the gallery weekend a few times uh, with the artist. So, I mean, it's, it's a great way for them to sort of interact with what's going on in India, because I think now there seems to be a lot going on in terms of, uh, you know, um, art uh, hap happenings and events. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Um, so the other thing that we do is an open studio, which is also, um, you know, great for the artists, uh, especially as you can see in the background, there's uh, Jyoti Bhatt and Jyotna Bhatt who are prominent artists um, in Baroda. Uh, uh, and they've come to sort of interact with the artists, they're speaking to one of the sculptors. And um, I mean, we have like two, 300 people who come and, you know, visit the open studio every time there's a residency. Again, with the pandemic, uh, you know, a lot of things have been put on hold, but um, I hope that it sort of happens uh, very soon and, you know, uh, in the next few months. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, again, we do like a lot of um, events with the local communities. So we had Harsha, uh, NS Harsha, who uh, is from Mysore. He did this workshop with the local uh, school. And we invited the parents to come and see what the kids had done on these uh, T-shirts. So the, so the, you know, they had to actually um, paint their uh, dreams on the T-shirt. And you know, it was a, it was a lovely event that we had. And again, um, we had the artists and the rest of the artists to come and volunteer. Uh, can we go to the next slide? 
yeah, again, this is, um, so we've had a lot of artists come in and interact with the residents. So it's, it's a good way to sort of, you know, um, again, just uh, know about your work and get some feedback. Um, so this, yeah, can we go? I think that's the end of the, oh yes, there's more. Um, so yeah, so this is, um, again, I am a true um, fan of the online, though I think there's a lot of online fatigue, but um, you know, it's great for artists in Baroda or anywhere else in India um, who aren't part of a metro city to now see exhibitions online. And there's so much archiving and there's so much research that you can be part of because everything has been taken online. So um, this again is an artist um, uh, online session we did with uh, Asia Art Archive uh, because they have this free um, online resource which is available to all artists all around the world. Um, so I do encourage like a lot of online sessions with the residents. So I mean, obviously, uh, everyone's like, like, and, and generally, what is the tenure of the residency, or what do you think? I, well, mean, I think I mean, when I actually started off, the tenure of the residency used to be almost a year or two years. So the artists used to stay and like you know just be there for. But I realized that you know again there were a lot of artists who wanted to apply but couldn't because there there were a limited amount of studios so and it made sense to actually have a process in place yeah like we have a process i um rely a lot on uh, virangana solanki who's um, a curator um, and has done many shows in india um, and i really um, value her uh, advice as to you know um, what to do next and uh, we sort of work in tandem quite a lot um, she's a great mentor to the artists also um so um so yeah it's 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 working in that sense and also uh, we have a website where the artists can um they upload their works uh, as you can see there's a lot of um artists and there's not many galleries in india i feel uh, so i you know this is another platform where they can reach out directly to the collectors and hopefully uh, you know some galleries correct yeah makes sense so i think yeah so this is um so this is what the studio is about and um uh, i mean it's it, it's again with the pandemic we had a uh, we we couldn't sort of um, have it physically but uh, again our next open call is uh, going to shut it has shut soon and i'm going to have residents in in about um, 10 days time so um, hopefully with all the safety measures in place we'll restart um, and also all the artists are looking forward. I mean, they would have been quite productive yeah. in their studios. As Absolutely. Well. I was talking to uh, Absolutely. a curator and she was saying that it's like literally uh, two ends of the spectrum. Either they've been like ridiculously productive or they've just not been in the mood to do anything. Exactly. So it's like, I mean, it's very personal, but I think for a young artist, it, it makes sense to be part of a community. Uh, rather than you know working in isolation, so um, so yeah. And and Krupa, you like you know uh, you mentioned that like I I gone to space studio early on like many years ago as well, and now you said that it's kind of moved to this new space. And I did go to Alembic City last year, and uh, like you know uh, I was shown around and all of it, and the space looks really promising. So uh, I believe you have some slides as well to. Uh, showed the the uh, events that happened there and how space studio has moved yeah. there and what the correlation is so if you want to just like kind of touch upon it yeah uh, maybe yes we can share the slides for Olympic city i'm not going to go through each slide i think but uh, again this touches upon uh, patronage um we have um in Olympic city has been uh, conceptualized by my brother-in-law udit uh, so the idea was to retain the historic um, identity for, of all our 100-year-old buildings, but at the same time move it to a new path and purpose. Um, so the city is uh, around 50 acres. Uh, there's about 2 lakh square feet of office space uh, under construction now. And um, there's this art district, which has um, you know, uh, the space that you can see now, which, is, which was a gallery. Um, which has, you know, which we, we've had dance performances, uh, jazz performances, there are, there are restaurants, food courts, uh, we've had a um, children's festival, um, there's also a skate park. So I think it's like giving back to the local community and 
um you and know, it's open to all like there's no end yes. like, like people Absolutely. can just yeah. come it, in it, and- Exactly. I mean, it's a place for people to meet, interact, have a meal, uh, you know, spend time with your family. Um, and um, I mean, this is again our way of giving back um, to the you know local community because we've been uh, you know in the pharmaceutical business or in business for the last hundred and fourteen years. So uh, you know, this hopefully the space will um, you know be like a hub in Baroda and hopefully attract uh, visitors from all over India. Even the Alembic Museum, I mean, it's like, I mean, like mm. the history of the Alembic Group, like that itself yeah. has been, uh, like, you know, put together really well and documented yeah. visually beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's, I mean, again, it's just not for those seven or eight residents. It's going to attract a lot more artists and it'll be a space to, uh, you know, even just hang around and interact and meet. So, um, yeah, so we look forward to it. Hopefully in the next couple of years, I think it'll be all sort of coming together since it's a very large project. Correct. And and uh, Kruka also, like, you know, you've spoken about, like, Alan Bake or, like, you know, you'll have been in the business for 100 years or given back to uh, Baroda, uh, to uh, MSU, et cetera, et cetera, the artists there. I mean, where, what do you think is the future of patronage in India, considering that's, like, the core topic of today and also you know where do you see yourself 10 years from now as a patron i think um you know that over the last i think 10 years or so there's been so much going on in the art space i feel um you know there's kochi biennale there's serendipity um mrs nader who's given so much to the indian art space um there's indian art fair so it's it, it, there's a lot of things that have um, you know cropped up uh, in terms of the art space uh, I think patronage will definitely increase. Um, it's just a matter of time. I think we definitely need more players in it. Um, but I think if they, everyone does the individual bit, I think it will really take off. Um, and um, I mean, the art market, I, what I hear from now is worth $60 billion. Uh, India is sort of very low on sales and, you know, the uh, whole crux of it. But I think um, I, like, and I, I saw this... Amrita Shergil, which went for 37 crores. So I think it, it, it is going to pick up. I think it's going to be uh, a great space to, uh, you know, watch out for. Um, we spent 0.0%, 1%, I think, of GDP on art and culture. So uh, the potential is huge. Um, but I, I personally, I feel I'll, I want to do my little bit, uh, which is go deeper into um, supporting the next generation of artists in whatever effective way that I can. Um, and, uh, like something we, uh, I just uh, spoke to recently with, uh, um, art chain and, you know, again, where I was involved, uh, is, uh, you know, we're supporting hundred artists to write effective CVs and get their sort of, uh, uh, write-ups on art in order so that, you know, when they have to sort of, uh, approach galleries or residencies abroad, uh, it is much more uh, streamlined and you know effective for them to uh, get into these uh, uh, ways to make the art practice better. Nice. So, um, so there are a lot of ways, and especially in the online. I think with the pandemic, the good thing that's come out of it is everyone sort of much more engaged and um, into the online space. It's so easy to reach out now. So, um, I think it's. I want to sort of push forward in that direction. So yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. I think these little things help, like, you know, what you said that you're helping artists with uh, m- helping them to kind of reach out to these for these grants and things like that. When they are new and raw, they need that support. And like, you know, even if it is like these little things also kind of really uh, give them that confidence and support. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I, I have one last question for you. Uh, which is that, you know, both, uh, uh, I mean, of course, as a patron, uh, everyone has their own individual journey as well. And uh, most patrons collect individually as well. So you and she- like Seanak both share this common interest. So let's just, how do you collect? Is there a pattern emerging in your collection, in your peer groups collection? Or what do you see? Like, what's the sense? Um. So I would say that we don't have a large uh, collection personally, me and Shaunak. Uh, of course, 
my uh, family has uh, collected over the years. Uh, we've just started collecting, uh, but um, it's, I won't say I have all the, you know, I haven't ticked all the boxes and had all the contemporary um, top artists in my collection. So, but it's more uh, an outcome of stories that we sort of, uh, of conversations with gallerists and curators and friends that this, uh, you know, body of work has come to us. Um, I think uh, we, we, we collect contemporary art um, and uh, I think the art that we collect is the pattern that I see when I look back at what I've uh, what we've collected in the recent years is um, art which is relevant to India or you know art art India through the artist eyes. Um, so we've collected say you know Shilpa Gupta, Atul Dodia, um, Harsha. The, these these are the artists that sort of we've related to quite well. Um, of course, there are very impromptu choices. Um, I remember going to LA last year and then visiting your gallery uh, and um, buying George Bryan, uh, who I had no idea about. Uh, really? And it, again, it's not an Indian artist, uh, but uh, I just liked it. It just I just related to it. He was painting. He had photographed LA and juxtaposed images and made it into collages. So it was more of an impromptu buy. I didn't really have to think about it. And of course, there are um, uh, buys that we you know we need to research maybe wine and dine the artists and the gallerists um <laughs> <laughs> since art buying my, not my so, was cheap uh, so I get any wine and dining <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but, no, but i mean it, it has been, it, it is an intimidating process i think when i started off uh, i was I was scared initially to go into a gallery and, you know, sound intelligent, ask the prices. But eventually over the years, you understand it quite well. And I think that's what it is with, uh, whether it's, you know, with young artists or with collectors or curators, the more you sort of see art, the more you understand it and the more you think um, where your interest lies. So, um, so yeah. you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a, it's, it's great to have a rewarding journey. And, um, I'm glad that Shonak has been part of it with me. Uh, and of course, I collect, um, I support my uh, studio artists and I collect their works, uh, the ones that I'm drawn to. So, um, yeah. Oh, and also it's like been... little, like whenever we've spoken and met or ha like had these heated discussions on the art market. I mean, like whenever I've spoken to both of y'all, it's kind of, you know, there's a focus, like, you know, you've narrowed it down to these artists and you want to follow them and you know, collect in depth rather than being scattered across. Absolutely. But it, I, think, I guess it's just a matter of time. You make your mistakes and then you, you know, um, learn, from them, learn from them and move on. Yeah. Um, but as we, as we move uh, to talk about collections and galleries, let's now put the spotlight on you um, and, <laughs> Bring it and on. talk about the art market. Yeah. Uh, Art, which is a beautiful space in Kolaba in 2015. Um, and uh, you've had exhibitions, really well curated exhibitions of modern and contemporary art. So um, do you want to just touch upon like how you started and, you know, what your sort of position is in the um, art market today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, as you know, uh, I started off as a consultant, uh, uh, you know, when I left Bodhi and Obviously, the natural progressive step was to start a gallery and showcase artists that one believed in. And uh, when I started the gallery, I was very clear that I want to show a mix of modern and contemporary and not just stick to one genre. Because, you know, there's so much overlapping and exchange of ideas between artists that we've distinguished as modern or contemporary. Like, uh, like a classic example is our current exhibition as well, or pretty much a lot of them that we've done in the past, like, for this exam, uh, exhibition, you would see that we've uh, used uh, Dabiarwala from 1948, juxtaposed with yeah. Rabindar Reddy from 2021. So, you know, it gives a, a broader insight into the artist's mind, the times, and it kind of gives you a more holistic view. And, and uh, in terms of where we stand or what our position is, I just feel we're very well poised where we are. We have a strong uh, stable of uh, young contemporary artists, which we intend to increase. Uh, we bring fresh content, fresh modern content to the market. 
and uh, we have access to both modern and contemporary collectors. So we are kind of quite rooted into the system. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's no point distinguishing, you know, when you go and see art, you know, it's, it's great to see everything. Uh, and that's what you're, and in these times, it is great that you're, you know, doing both contemporary and modern uh, because of course, also, uh, I think the art now, market. Uh, honestly, if you see Krupa, it's like, it's getting there. A lot of galleries, they're adding, yeah. uh, I mean, it's not only estates, but everyone's realizing that, uh, okay, if I, add this artist who hasn't gotten his due it kind of goes with my program or if i yeah you know that it's it's opening up a lot so i think Absolutely. everyone's kind of uh, thinking on those lines and yeah and i think yeah absolutely i mean it's it's a matter of time where you know it, a lot of galleries will sort of consider both uh, but we've seen uh, modern art reach high values we saw amrita shergill's work sold at you know, 37 and a half crore in a saffron auction a few days ago. Um, so what is your view on someone who's looking, uh, you know, who's made a lot of money and wants to collect uh, the modern artists? Uh, I think I'll have to give a very commercial answer. So uh, yeah, bear with me. It's going to be a bit ruthless. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, I just feel I just feel that there are various reasons. Firstly, as to why the modern Indian market has, uh, you know, reached these soaring numbers, uh, people uh, relative like feel relatively safer buying modern Indian art because uh, they find there's a slightly larger scope for a resale uh, in the Indian context. Uh, also, in the recent past, savvy buyers have had the opportunity, uh, you know, to invest larger sums in a very high quality painting where their returns have been uh, fairly good compared to any basic debt instrument. And thus they mm -hmm. see it as a viable option. Um, um, you know, also, also people in the financial and trading worlds, they've understood the economics of the art market really well. So they've realized that if there's a fabulous painting, I don't mind spending top dollar. I know it's got very little supply. It's in strong hands and they, they just, know that it's a good asset class and uh, uh lastly it's also like a function of age most people collecting mm -hmm. modern art are probably potentially upwards of 45 50 and you know they relate more to modern indian art so and they have the budgets to spend so that's where i think the market is and that's where i feel the prices have like really surged and in terms of what you asked me about, you know, someone looking to collect moderns, I'd say that uh, please buy, you know, high quality. Uh, uh, it may, it may, uh, uh, I mean, you may pay that slight premium now, but it will give you disproportionate returns. And the little premium that you've paid now will kind of get neutralized very easily, especially in a growing market. Fair enough. Quality is the key. Um, and, and yeah. Absolutely. I think it's like with, you know, with the modern masters, I feel like, of course, if you are doing it as an investment, it is always good to do your research, know, you know, that you're getting into it uh, for what reasons, etc. And then I think also the holding period should be long enough because people get impatient, but I think that that always sort of helps, you know? Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's, that's my take on it. Um, but on the flip side, what's your, what's your outlook on uh, contemporary art uh, in you know, today's market? There have been fluctuations, there have been, it seems to be uh, you know, being in demand, but I mean, what's your outlook as a gallery? No, I mean, I, I, think, I think all, like all art has been contemporary at some point in time, right? I think it's, uh, contemporary art is more a lifestyle purchase and uh, people, uh, as far from experience, what I've seen is invariably in India, uh, start buying art or contemporary, buying art in general when they're building a new home and then the bug catches on to them and then they move on to becoming more serious collectors. So in, in terms of contemporary art, I think uh, it needs more investment of time. Uh, you need to follow the artist's practice really closely and, and also, uh, you know, uh, be confident about your choices. And, and uh, I think it's a longer journey, but possibly a more rewarding one, not only financially, but uh, even more satiating in terms of uh, 
you know, building relationships with people in the art fraternity or being, uh, being, being happy about the choices that you made turning out to be really successful. Yeah. And, and but I think it trends, seems like a... Sorry, you were saying like, no, you, you, you asked me about like the trends in contemporary the tra- Yeah. Yeah. So yes. I, yes. I, I just feel like currently everyone's kind of looking towards more minimal art, more like, you know, single tone colors, more mm. linear things like objects it's just purely because the homes that people are moving into or living in i mean the aesthetic is conducive to that so personally i feel that's like for example you'll see like i don't know if i should name but you know there are these five seven eight artists which are very sought after now and everyone's leaning towards their works purely because it fits that kind of style and work and yeah I don't know about this, so you better send me the names after the talk. Yeah, but, no, the <laughs> uh, but it seems like a lot of people, yeah, uh, are buying art in the you know in the last year. Uh, so why do you why do you feel so? I think I mean it's it's the pandemic. People have been home. You know, they've not spent money. They haven't traveled. They feel the need to indulge, and also when you're at, at home you have more time to engage with the art in your house. You have time to redecorate. Mm. So, so, and it's like a domino effect, right? Like uh, you are talking to your friend and saying, oh, you know, I got offered this painting. It's really nice. I like it. I'm thinking of getting it and I'm getting it. You should look at it. They look at it. They tell, and it just kind of transcends further. And also I, I feel that a lot of projects, a lot of uh, mm. uh, homes got delayed or stuck due to the pandemic. And mm. when things opened up, everyone was rushing to finish those projects. And that's why there was a lot of art that was needed as well. So mm. I think that's how you saw that interest level really kind of peak. Yeah, I think so. I mean, even uh, through our website, uh, you know, we don't sort of market it in any way, but there were uh, young collectors from like indoor and, the you know, who wanted to be... Uh, buying works uh, for the houses. So it was, it was great yeah. for us. No, no, tier um, two towns are rocking right now. Yeah. It's, I mean, this sheer scale of homes, uh, yeah. we just need art. I mean, if, if they, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's a great, I mean, it's, you, you want to be aspirational. That's one asset class that you look at, you know? So um, it's, right. it's good for us. But what about um, selling art? <laughs> uh, since you're in the in the market for you know secondary sales, um, is it easy to sell works? Do collectors sell as easily as they buy? Uh, what's your um, take on that? I think uh, I mean well, selling art is relatively easier uh, for art with it that is more desirable and in vogue because obviously a buyer knows he wants it. It's only a question of price. But uh, mm. on a broader scale, it's pure demand and supply, right? Like if there's a particular contemporary living artist who's extremely sought after and there's very little production, obviously the prices in the secondary market will be very strong. And conversely, if there's a living artist whose works are, uh, I mean, there's tremendous supply of his works mm. and naturally the secondary pricing has to be competitive or compelling for someone to buy. So it's just yeah. demand and supply. Correct. Fair enough. And um, I mean, do you have any advice for young collectors? I know there are a lot of friends who want to buy art. I know that you're very approachable. Um, you know, you mm-hmm. always, uh, you're always helpful. I uh, have friends who have sent to you because I know that you'll, you know, if they have a particular artwork they're looking for an artist, uh, you will try your best to sort of help them out. So is there yeah, any so. advice that you give for um, collectors, you know, through well, this? I mean, I mean, for younger, younger collectors, honestly, I would say, look, uh, don't be on the sidelines. Uh, uh, spend a lot of time learning, looking. You have to do that, but spend a bit of yeah. money to make bold purchases. The And like you said, you know, the faster you get involved, the quicker you move on, even if you make your mistakes, you, you're done with it. And then you move towards building a kind of 
more comprehensive concrete collection for the future yeah i agree so hopefully the way forward is uh, through akara art <laughs> yeah bring it on 100% i think i think i think <laughs> okay, I I no I honestly think like we're we're all in a very good place there's a lot of scope I mean India is doing so well and in general people are getting more and more exposed there's there's tremendous potential only thing is be wise by quality uh don't go for deals you're going to lose money there and and uh, yeah I mean uh, like I I just feel like you know a healthy conversation with a uh, good gallerist or a dealer will always reap ben, like you know dividends absolutely it, yeah it, it's a it's a large ecosystem but i think um but there are few players in each sort of aspect you know so and if you connect to them i think you're quite in the know uh, whether it's uh, i think the role of a curator is just as important now even when you know I, I, as a collector i mean i, I love to speak to uh people who have actually curated the shows um yeah, with sure. the gallerists so you know they all work in tandem and if you can get into that role quite easily um or like get access to those people easily it's 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 a win win situation so um Correct. yeah it's been it, it's interesting um let's see how it goes but um i think we are done with our questions and answers and if there any other uh, questions maybe we can uh, take a few um yeah. i think there's uh one second i don't even know how to see them hold on <laughs> it's okay okay there's just just i think one question for me uh which says that does it get difficult juggling roles of patron art promoter and collector uh krupa um no i think they're quite separate because uh i feel that you know in every both those i would say as a patron and it's not like you know i'm building a museum or it's not a very wide role but at the same time um i have enough support uh and also um when it comes to a collector i mean it's a passion so it's it's something that you know in my free time uh i love to have a conversation with whether it's my husband or it's a gallerist or a friend who's you know collecting art so i think um i don't think it's a it's 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 great to be in both roles um and not at all sort of difficult um you know i would love to I, i'm i love being part of both so yeah and i think there's a, a question for you puneet um hi puneet which would be your top 3 contemporary artists and why uh i i i would say like uh, top 3 i would i would want to say uh danita singh uh 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 i mean danita singh i want to say uh bala and, mm. and 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 sudhir patwardhan mm. and and why because i just like them and there's no reason i i just love their work i think they are great people they are uh, intellectually very very sound and yet uh, you know they have their head on the ground and and they produce phenomenal work and they don't over produce so great i think that's it um anupa do you do you have anything else for us uh just checking if there are any more questions from the audience today uh why has sosan lost the bandwagon amongst the moderns in terms of prices uh too much supply she's painted 40000 paintings as opposed to a guy tonde who's painted probably 500 and and too much of uh, inconsistency in uh, i mean not i don't want to say inconsistency but yeah i mean the quality varies a lot so prob possibly i think it's also and the tangent on the fees yeah in documentation with pusan's arts works you know so yeah. i mean in terms of provenance and authentication ah, exactly. etc exactly but he was a brilliant okay. artist yeah brilliant yeah. brilliant yeah. Art. i mean he he like yeah. that's why you call him the fa- father of modern indian art right like it's yeah. it's i'm just giving a commercial answer to a commercial question please don't hold me for that 
<laughs> no, I appreciate your candor, um, Puneet. Uh, but it's it's really been a very interesting conversation because we had these two different perspectives from both of you. And thank you very much for sharing so much with us. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this has been fun. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it and, has. yeah. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. See you.
Puneet. Oh. Uh, why has Susan lost the bandwagon amongst the moderns in terms of prices? Uh, too much supply. He's painted 40,000 paintings as opposed to a guy Tonde who's painted probably 500. And, and too much of uh, inconsistency in, uh, I mean, not, I don't want to say inconsistency, but yeah, I mean, the quality varies a lot. So possibly. I think it's also and the tons and tons of documentation. Yeah, and documentation with Hussain's works, you know. So, yeah. I mean, in terms of provenance and authentication, ah, exactly. etc. Exactly. But he was a brilliant okay. artist. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, he, he like yeah. that's why you call him the fa father of modern Indian art, right? Like it's yeah. it's I'm just giving a commercial answer to a commercial question. Please don't hold me for that. <laughs> no, I appreciate your candor, um, Puneet. So I, I think uh, there is one more question. No, it's just a thank you to both of you. So thanks again, yeah. everyone. Thank you, thank you Anupa. This has been fun. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and, yeah. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. See you.